what's going on guys my name is adam welcome to driven nashville on this video we're going to be talking about the new 2005 mx5 the mazda speed it's about 72,000 miles we recently picked this car up and we decided to build a race car i uh, hope you guys enjoyed the first clip following that gt3 rs that was at ncm which is uh, bowling green that was not even two weeks ago uh, it was actually last weekend last saturday and I had a blast. It was the second track day with this car. We've also been to PTC, Polecat Training Center, uh, which is in Lynchburg, which is also where Jack Daniels is. So that next event there is coming up, I wanna say early May, and the next event for NCM is May 6th. In this video, if you're interested, we, uh, we did a lot of the build. I'm gonna start talking about all the parts next. I'm gonna talk about what we've done to it. Uh, this is 1.0 build, I would say. So. Um, we're going to do a few other things to uh, finish the car and that's coming up. So until then, we'll, uh, we'll talk. We've soon. got Willowwood brakes guys right here. Big brake kit. What with black in the front, what with the four piston calipers in the rear. All right. So I really wanted to focus on making the car stop. It's got flying Miata, uh, V, v max, uh, coilovers. It has R theory frame strengthening right through here on both sides you have to drill 12 bolts on both sides to do that it's also got the racing beats you can actually see it here that bar right there that big red bar has been changed out the r theory um, so this actually connects the roll bar to the body and really reduces uh chassis flex it's incredible how much of a difference that makes so lots of um you know extra suspension bits have been upgraded ultimately then You've got an OMP racing seat that's been installed, which actually adds even more stability. You have the hard bar, which adds a ton of stability here. This is a roll bar as well. Four point harness bar, which adds more stability. So trust me, this car feels very planted, especially with Falcon uh, RT660s or Falcon RT660s. Um, these, these are two days of track uh, wear on these tires. You can see it picks up all the gunk from the track, but plenty of life left. I'd say this got the way I drive, which is pretty aggressive, pretty hard. He's probably going to get another three to four track days. So basically you get one season out of them. Maybe, maybe you, know, you have to change them out at the end. If you're still going hard, we're going to put door cards in here to finish it. We had to remove the door to get the OMP racing seat. See this right here. So that's a problem. But otherwise this is going to be changed out to the same seat. We're going to take the doors out put some door cards in that really other than blowing the turbo now i will say moving to the engine just to give you some you know upgrades so it has a blox system here it has a skunk 2 intake intake manifold this is a flying or excuse me a super miata coolant reroute kit so the coolant used to you know basically stay in the engine and then come out the front the problem is you know when you're constantly putting gravity all the water shifting to the back right but the exit was up here so it would cause some of the rear cylinders to get unnecessarily hot this really helps the the engine flow through the whole engine you know and it comes out the back it's just better for it they say and uh, it's also got some upgraded cooling here with the radiator and it's got pretty much the big enchilada kit. So what would happen if this thing broke, the little tiny baby turbo that's right there, I'd probably put a Garrett turbo. It's quite a bit bigger. I'd rip out the whole ECU. We'd do a standalone ECU. It would run on E85. This would push this engine with roughly 16 to 18 pounds of boost at that point with the bigger turbo. It would push the power to probably 330 horsepower. Um, now to the wheels, probably closer to 315, 300, somewhere in there. But I will tell you guys, that would be a lot of car, a lot of engine in what is otherwise a 2,300 pound car. So a lot of performance. I do want to give a big shout out to um, my sponsors here. I can't thank you guys enough. Love all you guys. Um, you know, Paradigm did the wrap, Paradigm615.com. Please check them out. They're amazing. Uh, Process Wave does all my videos. Music City Fire is Steve Palladino's company. Love that guy. Love his uh, his systems as well. Of course, Podium One is the new concept that's coming uh, to Nashville. Super exciting. iRacing because, well, this is what inspired the whole damn car was, frankly, iRacing in VR. And then Direct Auto, our channel partner, um, longest standing channel partner, helping us buy and sell our cars. And then Generational Wealth Partners is what actually pays for all this stuff. Uh, you know, cash flowing real estate, guys. That's what it's all about. So hope you enjoy the uh, the clips that are coming. Hope you enjoyed the first scene. 
Thank you so much for watching. I had a lot of fun building this car, having a lot of fun with the channel. I'm really uh, looking forward to bringing all you guys to more and more races so you can really see the track. Hope you like the car. You know, I dig the front lip it's got here. I didn't mention that, but if you want to build this car right now, guys, it is roughly 20. This particular car, as it sits, is probably a $24,000 car. So think about that. You can have an entire race car for 24 grand, or you could change out your PCC brakes on a 911 GT3 RS or a McLaren 600 LT. You could have an entire car, or you could have equivalent dollars to just change your brakes. It's, it's just amazing, you know? I, 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 I have a hard time sometimes when, a, when just brakes alone cost what an entire awesome race car could be. So I'll let you guys make the value proposition there, uh, but I just think this is so much car for the money. And, you know, I would encourage you guys to build your own because I've had a lot of fun. I enjoy the heck out of the car. It's fun that it, it exists now, right? So yeah, there we are. Oh, excuse me, it's about $7,000 worth of upgrades on it. Uh, some of the obvious things here are gonna be like the Skunk 2 intake and manifold. You know, it's got the, uh, basically the Fly Miata intake. It's got uh, coilovers and it's got an exhaust. However, there's a few things we've already noticed about the car. One is the exhaust, I don't think, I think there must be a leak or something has separated. It's rattling and it smells like carbon monoxide. So I'm thinking it's getting uh, away from the catalytic converter, which is also causing a code. We're also going to be changing out the oil. We're gonna go ahead and put water wetter here, which is super coolant for the track. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do, a, of course, an oil filter. And then we're gonna go ahead and change out the, the plugs as well, because I felt like the car was bogging a little bit on full throttle. Ian here, he's uh, one of my mechanics. Thank you, sir. If you guys need services on MX-5 specifically, this guy has built arguably one of the best MX-5s in the country, <laughs> if not the best that I've personally seen anyway. And uh, he'll be happy to help you out. I'll get you in touch with him. He's located right now in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. So yeah, this will be a progress video. Uh, we're also gonna talk about the livery that we're doing next. I'll go ahead and throw the livery image here as a little preview for you. And then the next time we'll pick up the livery will be actually some installation shots and then final installation. That would explain the smell, right? That would explain the smell. So, being a little bit low, having lots of fun on some bouncy roads, looks like the exhaust here in the rear has just completely come apart on that weld. Not a huge deal, something to just weld back up, clean it up, weld it back up, and it'd be good to go, good as new. Everything else doesn't look too, too bad though. <laughs> From the from the front, it looks like Rust has claimed his bracing underneath. So either Fly Miata or our theory cross brace is definitely gonna happen. Help stiffen everything up. So on your regular screen, which is gonna tell you your boost pressure once you get into boost. All right. And you press the menu and it'll okay. say duty cycle. Duty? Which okay. is the duty cycle of the actual valve. All right. And it'll show 9.6 pounds, duty cycle is at 34%. You can turn it up. Okay. Turn it to 40. And it'll say P.1 because it hasn't read pressure yet. And then what you do is you leave it on this screen. Mm -hmm. and you'll make a pull and it'll start building. Once it starts building boost and you hit peak boost, it'll display it here. So it'll say peak, whatever your pressure was, and, mm -hmm. then say do the same thing. and then you can go to gain, which is how fast the wastegate, it allows the wastegate to open. And I would leave it at 50, that's a good number. And that's really it, you don't want to. But just change the duty and, and go up to there. What, what what would your max percentage be? I'm at, if I'm at 40, would you say 40 is it? Or? Over boost. So it's set at over boost at 9.8 pounds. And you're hitting 9.6. Okay. So, turn that up to 10 and a half. These cars will handle a lot of power. This my car had the factory computer and it had 12 14 pounds. Well, I turned it up 40%. So once yeah. we get the exhaust on and the fluids are changed, yeah. we'll take it out and I'll set it. If we can turn it up to 12, yeah. and I'll set it at 12.
putting on the Willowwood brakes. So um, my boy here, he's a really good uh, mechanic here in Middle Tennessee. And uh, this is uh, Mike Zuzan. Uh, and basically he is, I think, got the original brake off. Here is your original. And the new brakes are about one inch larger. And we're also gonna be replacing these rotors with the Super Miata big brake kit. So exciting stuff. Just the front ones, and then we're gonna be replacing on the rear here, just the brake lines and then re-bleeding the system essentially so that you know we have the option to get uh, some good racing fluid and hopefully it doesn't overheat. And that's it. We're gonna go and smash it tomorrow and see what happens. Bleed screw. Bleed screw. Broke off from the previous owner when we tried to get it out. So. That basically means that while everything else has been bled best we can, it doesn't appear for safety reasons that we're probably going to want to take this to the track tomorrow. So the first track day, we're going to go down there, but we're not going to be on the track potentially. Otherwise, everything is dialed in, but we're going to get probably new calipers, new rotors, new pads, and just change them out with the upgraded brakes anyways. Might as well at this point. Yeah. yeah 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 it was an unexpected thing you know it's it's hard to see that piece specifically because you can see that's what it's supposed to look like yeah it was it's, someone broke it off a long time ago and it's been seized in there for who knows how long yeah we which probably explains why the brakes weren't blood because yeah, the the I mean, fluid was a disaster heat on it we our easy out broke off inside of it and yep all the fluid was was garbage and of course you know we can't find any calipers anywhere yep yeah, we called every every auto parts store, including Mazda, and, and we can get them, but it'll take a couple of days, so it doesn't help us for tomorrow. So that's the news for now. Welcome to modifying cars. So today, what we're doing is we're going to be installing the R theory, uh, basically the reinforcing. Uh, what are they called? Reinforcing frame rails and frame then braces. frame rail braces and then we're going to be installing the omp racing seat so we've taken out the original seats here are the r theory frame rails we have um the r theory what are these called uh sway bar end links, sway bar en end links. And also have his reinforcement blocks as well. yep for the doors so today we're going to be doing the coolant reroute so this is going to be essentially i don't think you oh here it is this part right here, it's a very nice, very nice looking part, I gotta say. So that's gonna go back here. We're going to be uh, changing out, what else are you changing out? Okay, timing belts down here. We're gonna, there's a gasket down here that we found out's leaking. Uh, we're also gonna be changing out the water pump to an upgraded pump. And that's it, I believe, today. So this is just more about, you know, making sure the engine doesn't blow up with the extra pounds of uh, boost we're running. I'm doing about 11.4, or excuse me, 11.8 as of this morning. And notice there's some oil here. So we're going to think through what might be causing this. If it is that gasket or a gasket, probably an oil turbo gasket, um, but that is potentially an issue. So that's, uh, that's it for now. Stay tuned. There's a little update guys. So, uh, you can see the timing belt is off and we had to we changed this what's the seal called the lower one uh, oil pump seal oil pump seal it was leaking just a little bit down there so we're changing that out crank and it's crank seal crank seal oil pump seal whatever you call it yep there you go so making progress all right guys a little update so we've got the gates racing belt on here and we've got just the second bolt here's your coolant cut off here and as you can see, we've got the rear coolant exit here. And we're going to route that at the very last after we put on the cover. I would say on a scale of one to three beards, this would be a solid two to two and a half, maybe even three beards. Yeah. It's kind of a pain. All right, guys. So, you know, got the gasket cover back on. Everything all tightened up. All these fun little connections, all the airlines, everything else. So... You can see what it looks like. It gives you a little more room up front, no doubt about it. And we decided to just run the coolant line here, which we're installing right now. And uh, we'll see.
too far to go back now. There's no going <laughs> back now, that's for sure. Carbon fiber from here. Well guys, we have run into a problem. Um, when we took off the other piece here, or the other original coolant reroute, uh, there was a little bit of like, on this side, there was a little bit of uh, just, you know, what, what's it called, man? Like, gasket, like gasket residue. Yeah, gasket residue. So we were scraping it off with a razor blade and, and everything, and uh, we thought we got it all, but I guess we didn't because we've been filling it up, put water wetter in it, and the problem is it is leaking, it would appear, from that spot. So now we've got to go and get it all undone. How fun. What's going on, guys? Uh, sorry about the wind. It's super windy today, but I'm here with Louise and his brother, Lewis. And, uh, well, guys, here it is. It's not done yet. We're going to put the racing, the OMP racing seats in and some brake changes. But overall, the livery looks awesome. Absolutely love it. Uh, it turned out really great, actually. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Looking forward to tracking it. Coming up on Friday at PTC. Thank you so much to Paradigm 615. These guys worked really hard on this car. It's not an easy job. Not at all, not at all, but we to, did it. To design it and to line everything up, all the panels, right? I mean, because keep in mind, when this is a 3D piece when it's printed, right? So we got the hood louvers left and just a couple of other details, but overall, this thing is gonna really, uh, I think, be a lot of fun and looking forward to uh, some track time and can't thank these guys enough. We basically, uh... We designed it from the scratches. Yeah, and, uh, this is this is a this is like literally was created in Adobe, and then here it is in 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 person. So it's a lot of fun. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys soon. What's up, guys? All right, we're on day five now. As you can see, the livery has been installed. So the livery, I think, turned out really cool. I'm a I'm a big fan. Big shout out to uh, Paradigm Six One Five right here, who did the livery. Louise and his brother Lewis, they rocked it out. And uh, what we're doing today, it's just going to be a fairly short day today. I thought that was kind of a cute little message, right? Uh, Ian here is uh, working on the rear brake. So we've ordered the Flying Miata Big Brake Four Piston Caliper Kit which is right here, and that's what these look like. So there are your Willwood brakes, four piston. So those are going on. Hopefully they'll fit the stock rotors. We're gonna find out. And uh, then we're gonna put the racing seats in tomorrow and finish the hood louvers. These things right here were already cut out. I wanted to make sure I cut them out so that the wrap can be done perfectly with it. And then these will be the hood louvers and then the OMP racing seats are ready to go. And then we'll have some fun. All right, guys, day six or seven or eight or nine or 10 or 15. I don't know what day we're on. 30, 40, 37. Okay. <clears throat> Here is the OMP racing seats. Now, uh, I am becoming, I've read this online. I've watched YouTube videos about this, but we're trying not to bang in the tr into the transmission tunnel. And right now with these OMP racing seats, which by the way, are not wide seats. They're just regular seats. So I fit them in struggles. So the problem is you can't shut the door. You also, you know, you're pretty tight with that steering wheel. So, you know, there's a reason I guess why Miata put these seats in the darn thing, right? So now trying to figure out how to get that into what is otherwise a pretty small spot. I think that we probably should hammer into the transmission tunnel, but because I don't know how you're gonna close the door even if you get it down lower, but we'll, we'll find out. Take the slider out and move it over and drill our own holes on the bracket, about an inch over. All right, we're gonna now drill our own holes. Take up this space, scoot it over. Now, is that gonna change the position on the pedals though? Uh, a little bit, but like I said, you're not even centered anyways. Okay. So getting it over is pretty necessary. So bottom line, guys, this is trial and error. <laughs> that is that is pretty much what we're doing. So welcome to race car. Because race car. Okie dokie, guys. So... 
check it out. We have a racing seat. And we are also working on these, putting the hood vents on finally. So we have kind of made our marks of where they need to go and we're just gonna drill them in. And then the last piece here today anyways, oops, today anyways is taking this door off because you cannot close the door with the race seat, as you can see. Even though we pushed the seat pretty far. Now we haven't banged in the transmission tunnel and that's probably why. And we're not going to be putting in the passenger seat mostly because of time today because I have to go to the truck and be out there sometime this evening. So this is going to stay. That's okay because we're going to leave the door in so they have the oh shit handle here. And they do have the racing harnesses. So they should be okay. And the driver will, will be good, of course. So that's that. That's the update. And uh, we still have the front sway bar, which is actually here. And we have the front sway bar end links. We have the... What else? What else? Uh, I think that's it for, for this round. I mean, I was eventually going to put spark plugs in it and uh, maybe a wing, but that's... Oh, we're going to do a steering wheel, I think. I think we've decided to do a steering wheel a little bit smaller. So. All right, now we're taking the door off. Hood louvers turned out awesome. Check that out, guys. Looks good, I think. So that's done. But we can't, unfortunately, get into... Well, we can't shut the door. So hits right here. So that is a problem, to say the least. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it still would not close so we're just going to cut this piece off because we're a little annoyed and it's a race car okay guys we're on day seven here just had the car ceramic coated so we put a uh, two layers of uh i think it's i don't know g technique or something like that ceramic coating on the whole car so now i can go to track days and just spray the car off at the end uh, today, we're not going to be working on the seats uh, for time reasons, so we're going to change this out to be the passenger seat at some point in the near future, and we're also going to be putting in the door cards. Those are, I think those are called door cards. Yeah. Um, and then today, we're just going to be changing out the front sway bar, and we're going to be adding in those R Theory end links right around here uh, that we were not able to remove last time, so... The idea was if we bought the whole damn thing, we could we could get them out. But we tried to get them out last time, and you did get a new tool. I don't I think we actually uh, tried to remove them with your new handy tool that I got. So we'll see how it goes, but hopefully this doesn't take too long. Although anything suspension-wise on this car is taking longer than we thought because of rusty bolts. But uh, hopefully it's good. Right, guys, that is what it's supposed to look like. The problem we have discovered is you have your, your R-Link. Let me see if I can get around here. See our R theory end links, and there's a bracket that it's hitting in. You want to point that out for the folks? Yeah, this little guy, right there. Why is it doing that, by the way? Because, well, the it looks like Flamiata put brackets on both sides instead of just one side. And now that we've added the the beefy bar here, when everything settles, this edge is barely rubbing up against here. So we're gonna have to chop this side off. It's gonna be loads Please of fun. Sand it down. Yeah. So there you go. If you install a racing beat tubular, 1.25 yeah. inch. Notice you also your R theory right right there. So those are your what are those called again? Uh, sway bar mount sway reinforcement bar mount blocks. Reinforcement. So yeah. So that's that's it. So just keep in mind, guys, if you yeah. do have these are the flying Miata. What are they called? V Max. Yeah. If you have V Maxes and a racing beat bar, this little guy is going to be stupid close. There you go. Now you know.